We recently had sports writer David Schultz here to discuss his new book, Hockey Fight in Canada, the big media face-off over the NHL, which details the story of how the CBC lost the Hockey Night in Canada broadcast rights to Rogers. The CBC took some issue with Schultz's version of events, so in the interest of equal time, we welcome Chuck Thompson, who's the head of public affairs for CBC English Services, to rebut. Hello, Chuck. Nice to have you here. Thanks for having me, Steve. Uh, generally speaking, you obviously saw the interview. What'd you think? Uh, I thought it was a very interesting interview, um, but I would also say it was of concern to us because Mr. Schultz, in as much as he got a lot of things right, uh, there were times when he went astray with some facts, and when I finished watching the interview, I decided on behalf of CBC I needed to reach out to, to you specifically and ask if we could come on and set the record straight from and our perspective. Here you are. So I, 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 I guess what we'll do over the next period of time is we'll just show you a few clips from the interview. Mm -hmm. We'll get what his view is, and then you can have a chance to rebut. Great. Sound good? Sheldon, first clip if you would. Once Rogers and Bell, because they both came in with, with north of $5 billion yeah. offers, yeah. once they're putting that kind of money on the table, it's safe to assume that the CBC just couldn't play in that fish? No, they had no chance, and they should have known that going in. This is what still astonishes me, even, you know, five, six years later, mm -hmm. is that, you know, you think, didn't these guys do their homework? They seem to have the attitude that, um, well, we've been partners for this with this... NHL for 60 years, so that should buy us something. They should, and they came in with this, the same sort of offer that they had in the past. And what they should have done right from the start was form a partnership with one of those two entities, Rogers or Bell, and they steadfastly refused. And in the end, they got shut out completely, and it didn't have to happen if they'd just done their homework. Well, okay, a bunch of things going on there. Uh, not doing due diligence, not doing homework, a bit of an arrogant approach to the whole broadcasting negotiations in the first place. What's your issue? To suggest that we weren't well prepared heading into those negotiations is astonishing in and of itself, to use Mr. Schultz's word. Um, the lead negotiators, Neil McEnany, the then executive vice president, interim executive vice president for English services at the time, and Jeffrey Orridge, who was the head of sports at the time, among many other people behind the scenes, lawyers, people in sales, spent, I will say, north of a year prepping for what would be these negotiations. We knew going into it, or we assumed, I should say, going into it, that like every other major sports league in the world, the NFL, Major League Baseball, NBA, PGA Tour, tennis, you name it, that the NHL would do what everybody else had been doing, including the NHL, and that is to break up their rights. Not Nash give it to everybody. Right. I mean, with not a give it to one broadcaster. Right. Yeah. With a view to getting the most amount of money, and not just giving it to one broadcaster, national rights, regional rights, local rights. That's how they maximize their, their rights, uh, the profit from their rights. So were you sort of caught off guard when they took a different approach this time? We went, I would absolutely, and I'm not here to speak for Bell or, or Rogers, but I think it's fair to say, and if I recall in the interview with David Schultz, no one knew that they were going to go with a single gatekeeper approach. So when we were preparing, we were assuming that we would get, hopefully get a piece of that pie, fully recognizing it would never be the same again. Once the landscape had changed, the suggestion from Dave Schultz is that you should have partnered with one of those other folks going in. So. On that point alone, we partner with Bell and Rogers and have had on the Olympic Games for many years, long before these rights even started. So partnerships are not new to CBC. They're not new to anybody. It's how sports work. Um, we went into it thinking we would get a portion of whatever the NHL would arrive at once they concluded the negotiations. Schultz also says in his book, He's talking about Gary Bettman, the commissioner here, that Bettman had, quote, an acute sense of his own importance and therefore thought that his equal number of the companies he was negotiating with ought to have been at the negotiating table. Mm -hmm. And here's what Schultz says in the book. Once it was clear CBC president and, CBC and CEO Hubert Lacroix was not going to take an active role in the talks, the possibility the relationship between the NHL and CBC was finished emerged for the first time. Bell also did not have their CEO in these talks, Rogers did, Rogers got it. Was that a mistake? I think it's easy to play hindsight. I would say this, I think 
uh, Scott Moore, as I recall, was instrumental in getting Nadir Mohammed to the table for Rogers, mm -hmm. uh, which I think was very savvy of him. Do I think that was the reason why, NA, why the NHL gave the rights exclusively to Rogers? I don't. Do I know that for sure? Mm -hmm. No. I think at the end of the day, they wanted a very large check at the risk of being candid, and they're entitled to that, and they got it. Um, but there was a lot more to it than just having our CEO or anyone else's CEO at the table. There's also the suggestion Dave Schultz makes in the book that, that the CBC and the NHL from time to time had a very fraught relationship. And in particular, he points to an interview that Ron McLean did with Commissioner Bettman that got, I don't know, I watched the interview, I thought it was fine, but a lot of people thought it was very tense, right? And that, that McLean was, was chippy with Bettman and that he, um, he, he kind of didn't take a journalistic approach, but rather he said, I'm here to represent the players in this interview. And, and Bettman really didn't like that. And that got things off the rails as well. Do you think that was an issue in the negotiations? It wasn't inside the room for the negotiations. Uh, I certainly heard that Gary had expressed some concerns about perhaps Ron's style of interviewing. But I also know and understand that Gary wouldn't let that get in the way of what ultimately was best for the National Hockey League and its owners when doing the deal. We had a great and long-standing relationship with the National Hockey League, and Ron McLean was a part of that for many years. So I think it was such a huge issue, it would have surfaced, um, and maybe it did over the years, but not so much so that we would lose the rights over it. Well, and in fact, when, when McLean was reinstated as the host of Hockey Night in Canada, Bettman presumably could have vetoed that move, and he did not. And they went on to have and have had at least one or two interviews since, since Rogers. So. And they kind of joke about the fact that it's, it's, a, little, it's a little friendlier now yeah. than, it, uh, than it was on that one occasion. Schultz also reports that during the exclusive negotiating window that the CBC had with the NHL, the CBC was offered, quote, a scaled down version of Hockey Night in Canada, but that you guys turned it down. Is that true in your knowledge of things? I'm not aware of that. Uh, that I just don't know. Okay. I mean, the idea was CBC would get a couple of games a week, including the big Saturday night thing, which I, had been such a tradition. I think, and I'm restating what I said earlier, we went into it thinking we would get something. We knew it would never be the same, because mm -hmm. at some point, and I should say this, and, and to be fair to Mr. Schultz, he said it, there was no scenario, not one, where the public broadcaster was going to be writing the National Hockey League a check for $5.2 billion. And if anybody thinks otherwise, with respect, I mean, there's, there's a reality check there that uh, needs to be... Said. Well, here's, here's David Schultz maybe uh, doing a bit of that reality check right now. Sheldon, clip number two, please. They compounded it, actually. Once they lost the contract, then they turned around and got taken advantage of it in a really one-sided deal, the one you just referred to. And, and that just increased the anger of the staff because they said, how could you then just turn around and hand over our airwaves for free? You didn't have to. It's not like Rogers had their own network ready to go. And in the end, it was, it was a huge bluff by Keith Pelly, who was head of Rogers Media at the time, to get that deal. Hmm. And, and the CBC guys fell for it. Pelly had said, "My only, if, if the CBC had told me to shove it, my only choice, I would have had to go to Global. And, and, and again, Global doesn't have the reach. CBC right. does. But instead, the CBC executive said, oh, okay, yeah. Again, the suggestion here is that Rogers, having achieved uh, ownership of the rights, basically went to CBC and said, here is how it's going to be. And your executives, rather than negotiating for a tougher position, said, okay. A lot to unpack in what he said. I'll do my best. Sure. Inside of a very tight 48-hour window, once Rogers had been given the um, single gatekeeper rights, mm -hmm. they came to us. We knew they were coming to us because Gary Bet Bettman had signaled that to Hubert. Uh, I can tell you that the first offer that Keith Pelly brought to us, we turned down. Mr. Schultz doesn't talk about that. That said, again, inside of that very small window, our team and the Rogers team, who, by the way, are a great partner, have been a great partner, and continue to be a great partner, landed on something whereby it was an exchange of assets. But I can tell you, Steve, in no uncertain terms, we gave away nothing, absolutely nothing for free. And when I heard Mr. Schultz say that, it's simply not true. What I can tell you is he talked about studio space. He talked about office space. Um, Hockey Night in Canada operates out of... Uh, 
Front Street uh, the you talked broadcast about, You talked about your people having to vacate their offices and make space for the Rogers people who then came in. We shifted on the same floor. We have it now whereby, and it's a brand new deal, but the deal that he was alluding to in the book, is where we have hockey on CBC and have had and will continue to have, I might add, for the duration of Rogers' 12-year deal with the National Hockey League, every Saturday, regular season, and all four rounds of the hockey playoffs. And we, in turn, have that right given to us by Rogers by giving them everything from studio space, office space, um, production uh, resources behind the scenes, edit suites. How much of the ad revenue and, do you get? And then we get nothing of the ad revenue, but at the same time, and this is something else, we no longer pay the National Hockey League in the order of $105 million a year. Mm -hmm. By the end of the life of the last contract we had with the league, it was more or less money in, money out. Because over the, when, the only time you make money in those deals is during the playoffs. And if Canadian teams go deep. And if Canadian, and particularly, mm -hmm. being a Toronto Maple Leaf fan, if the Leafs go deep, you really see an mm -hmm. swing. But that didn't happen for seven years. <laughs> so I'm well aware it, of that. It, <laughs> uh, the, the, pain, your pain. The, the pain lives on. <laughs> We're all in therapy. The, uh, but it was a wash. And, and, and so the, the illusion that CBC was making hundreds of millions of dollars, not true. Hundreds of jobs were lost, not true. Shows were canceled, not true. All of which he said on this show. Okay, well, I, I mean, that will come as news to a lot of people who obviously believe that without the ad revenues from hockey, the CBC is in infinitely more difficulty than it otherwise might have been. And we'll do one more clip here of Dave Schultz and then get you to comment on that, um, on the issue of ad revenue. Sheldon, thanks, if you would. My best estimate was that they were getting somewhere around, I think, 175 million a year, maybe a little less, uh, for advertising revenue just for Hockey Night in Canada. Wow. Like that show drove the whole network. And, f and again, you know, for their, net for their executives to go into this as ill-prepared as they were, although I suppose they'll argue they weren't, is insane because you wiped out half your, uh, your advertising revenue and you did that while the government was cutting back its contribution, which is much larger, but at, at the same time, so you're getting whipsawed by this and it was a devastating loss to the corporation. And uh, shows were canceled, uh, people were laid off. It, it just reverberated right through the whole, the whole mm -hmm. company. We got about a minute and change yet, for, uh, left rather, for you to comment on that. We made, on a really good year, when the Leafs and or other Canadian teams made the playoffs, and as you said, went deep, $130 million. We were paying $105 million in the latter part of the last agreement. Um, did we make some money then? Of course we did, but not to the tune that he suggests. To replace hockey, and if we turned down Keith Pelly and said, no, we're not doing anything with you, to replace it, the three, four hundred million dollars, when you think about every Saturday night through the regular season, plus at April, May, and, and a good chunk of June. Yeah. Significant replacement cost. We don't have to do that anymore. And we get to keep hockey on CBC, fully recognizing it's the Rogers rights, but people can still watch hockey on the public broadcaster. And, it, and hockey and CBC became, uh, you know, we used to say was, we had a 60-year date with Canadian hockey fans every Saturday night and right through the spring, and we still do. And you still do. Uh, Chuck Thompson, we thank you for accepting our invitation to come in and uh, put your side of the story on the record, and we're grateful you made the time for well, us. Well, I thank you very much for letting me come on. Not at all. The Agenda with Steve Pakin is brought to you by the Chartered Professional Accountants of Ontario. Helping businesses stay on the right side of change with strategic thinking, insightful decisions, and business leadership. Are you on the right side of change? Ask an Ontario CPA.